Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome back to my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, I want to show you three final editing functions that I think are very important. And actually there's four of these, not three of them, but I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So these functions can be found if you select one or more regions, right click or control click on them, and then go down to bounce and join. So we have bounce in place, join and join per track. For these three, I'm going to be going in reverse order to explain them. And then there's one additional function I want to show you at the end called remove silence that sort of lets you batch process your trimming edits. So let's start off with the two that we've kind of already talked about in another video, join and join per track. So the shortcuts for these are command J for join and J for join per track. The join per track function is great for consolidating and combining together multiple regions on the same track into a new audio file or into a new audio region. So let's say I wanted to consolidate uh, this vocal recording all together into one region just to make it easier to drag around and to work with. One thing I could do is I could go into my inspector and add a quick fade in and fade out to each of these just to make sure that there's no pops or clicks in the edits. And then if I wanted to consolidate these together, I could just drag over all of these and press J. And what this will do is it'll actually create a new audio file and it'll sort of render down all of those fades. That's the join per track function. So join per track can be really helpful too if you do some quick swipe comping like we did here on the guitar solo. And instead of of flattening and merging, you just flatten and you can see all of the crossfades in there and maybe you decide to do some additional editing on your own. Maybe you decide to shift some of these things around a little bit um, and just kind of fine tune and fine tweak the edit. Then what you can do is after you've done all of that, you can select everything and press J to join per track. And now I've just got one audio region for my guitar solo rather than a bunch of little clips that are edited together. Okay, so next up, let me show you the join function. And I'll show you some cool things you can do with this editing function, although you're likely going to be using join per track for most situations where you wanna consolidate things together. So while J will join per track, it'll create one audio file per track, join can actually combine multiple tracks worth of regions together into a new region. So for example, if you prefer making beats like this with just you know dragging and dropping samples on the timeline, you may want to consolidate some of these instruments together. I've got two different kick tracks here, one that's soft, I've pulled down the volume, and one that's a main kick. So if I were to just to use the J function to join per track, it's gonna create two different regions. But if I drag over these and press Command J to join, it's gonna ask me if I wanna create a stereo or mono mix down of the regions. So if I say stereo, you'll see not only does it combine both tracks together, it also takes into account the volume change on the soft kick track. And so now I just have a single kick track rather than multiple kick tracks. Or I have this snare rim effect that goes from left to right, or actually goes right to left. I could consolidate these together, Command J. And because I created a stereo mix down, you'll see that the region there, the waveform in the region, is showing that one of the snares is on the right side and one's on the left side. And so we no longer have to have that panned over to the right or left. The panning is built into the stereo file. Um, or maybe I want to combine these clap sounds together to create a, a larger clap, a bigger clap sound. I can do that as well. And let me show you one quick trick. It's another editing feature that's kind of cool. Not like a necessity, but I, I think it's a really cool one to know. And that is the uh, reverse feature. So let's say I wanted to take this snare drum here. Let's duplicate the track and let's duplicate this sample down to that track just one time. Check this out. If you select that region, go over to your region inspector, go to more and then select reverse. You can actually reverse the playback of that snare. So let's go ahead and remove the fade on that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of overlap the two a little bit, do a quick fade out and I'm gonna pull the volume down. 
and I get like a reversed snare effect. And if you want to make even more out of that, if you wanted to make it longer, you can hold option and uh, hold your mouse over the left or right side of any region and you can stretch or compress the audio in that region. So if I want to make that reverse effect a little bit longer, I can do that as well. And then if I want to combine all of these snares together into one region, I can just press Command J with all of them selected. And then the reverse snare effect is built into or rendered into the new snare region. So those are the join per track and join functions. Before I move on to bounce in place and remove silence, I need to give you a quick word from our sponsor, Boombox. Unleash your creative potential with Boombox, today's sponsor. Boombox is revolutionizing collaboration for musical artists around the world. With over 60,000 musicians already on board, this platform lets you connect seamlessly with fellow creators, no matter where you are. Imagine working on a track with a producer in London while you're in the US and your singer is in Canada. With Boombox, you can share files, pitch ideas, and get timestamped feedback without missing a beat. Work with their online platform, use one of their mobile apps to manage your projects on the go, or use their Sync app for macOS to upload large files, including full DAW sessions. Join the Boombox Artist Network and create your own artist page to get your music out there. You can also check out profiles from other producers and industry professionals and find opportunities to collaborate and innovate with others. If you want to check out Boombox for yourself, head over to boombox.io and claim your four gigabytes of free storage today. Okay, so next let's talk about the bounce in place function. One of the limitations of the join function is that if you try to join together audio regions with MIDI regions and then press Command J and you create a stereo mix down, what it's gonna do is it's going to just combine uh, and join together the two audio regions, but the MIDI region is not going to be converted to audio. It will combine the edits that we had over here on the MIDI region, but this MIDI pick bass is not going to be included in this joined audio up here. So this is where the bounce in place function comes in really handy when you need to combine multiple types of regions and you need to convert MIDI type regions down to audio. In fact, that's probably the most common use. So let's say that I wanted to convert this MIDI pick bass to an audio region. All I need to do is select the whole track or I can just select certain regions and I can press Control B. This will bring up the Bounce Regions in Place dialog. You can give it a name. I'll just call this Disco Pick Bass BIP. And then you can choose to bounce down to a new track or leave the bounce on the selected track. You're only gonna be able to choose this option with audio tracks. So I'll show you that in just a bit. You can choose to leave the original source material. You can choose to mute those regions or you can choose to delete those regions. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute it. And then you can choose to include or not include effects plugins on the track. So if I turn this off, this means that all of these effects plugins that are on this track are going to be converted into audio along with the MIDI and the instrument itself. If I bypass the effects plugins, this will simply copy these effects down to the new audio tracks. So let's go ahead and include those effects for now. There's an option to include audio tail in file and include audio tail in region. What this is helpful for is if you have any time-based effects like reverbs or delays on a track, often the effect will extend beyond the end of the region. So including these in the region will include those audio tails. And then we haven't talked about automation much, but this will include any volume or pan automation in the bounce in place as well. And then you can choose to normalize the bounce or not. Turning this on will bring your audio up to a normalized volume level and overload protection will just make sure that your audio does not clip. Any clipped peaks will be normalized down below zero dBFS. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this off for this example. And then I'll just click OK to bounce in place. And what you can see is it has bounced in place all of this MIDI to a new audio region. It's converted not only the instrument, which is the hybrid basic, but also all four of these effects plugins are now sort of rendered into a new audio file. 
and you can see the audio tail there at the end. So let's say that instead of rendering all of those effects in, I wanna keep the effects separate. So let's select these, let's press Control M to unmute them, Control B to bring up bounce in place again, and this time we're gonna bypass the effects plugins, and I'll turn off the audio tail. And now it's bounced it down as audio, but you can see that all of the effects are here on the track. Now we're gonna talk more about using specific effects in future videos, but sometimes it can be helpful to keep a bounce in place dry so you can still tweak those effects later. Bounce in place can also be helpful when you want to combine different types of tracks together. So here I have an analog infinity track, which is a step sequencer pattern region. And maybe I wanna combine this with this awaiting arrival pad. I can select both of these, press Control B. I can mute the original. Uh, I'm not going to bypass the effects plugins this time and I will include the audio tail. Click OK. And you can see now I have a bounce in place of both of these tracks combined into one region. Another really common use of bounce in place is when you have a track or an instrument that has third party plugins on it and you want to bounce those effects into a new audio region. This is especially helpful when you're going to be handing a project off to another collaborator or off to another mix engineer who may or may not have the same plugins as you. So for example, here are two DI guitar tracks and for both of these, I'm using STL Amp Hub, which is a third party amp sim plugin, and they also have the noise gate on them. So what I could do is select that track and with that region selected, press control B. Let's put this on a new track. Let's mute the original. We're not going to bypass audio effects and then everything else down here can be turned off and it'll just take a moment to bounce that region in place. Now I have a new audio track with the amp sim plugin bounced into the audio region. So now if I send this project off to another collaborator, they can hear the guitar in the same way that I do without them needing to have that same third party amp sim installed. Now, one last thing I wanna show you that you can do with bounce in place is you can convert stereo regions down to mono. So what that means is that the left and right channels are gonna be combined together and we're just gonna have one single mono channel. So typically with audio tracks, you're gonna see two waveforms like this when you have a stereo audio region or a stereo track. And if you only see one waveform, this means it's a mono track or a mono audio region. Now, if you adjust the track height all the way down, eventually stereo regions will collapse down into a single waveform. But the way you can check and see if a track is mono or stereo is select that track, go over into the inspector, and if you see two interlocking circles here, that means it's a stereo track. If you click on that and you see one circle, that means that you've converted that track to mono. Even though the track is mono, the region is still stereo. If you want to convert the region to stereo as well, you can select the region with the track now in mono, do a bounce in place, I'll go ahead and put this on the same track. I'll delete the original and everything else I'll leave alone. And you'll see now I have a mono audio region. So again, we've just taken the left and right channels of that region and combined them together into a single mono channel. And the last editing function I wanna show you in this video is called Remove Silence. This feature in older versions of Logic and in other DAWs is more commonly known as Strip Silence, but it does exactly what it says it does. It removes silence and sort of auto trims recordings. So it's really helpful for recordings like this that have a lot of gaps in between the waveforms. It's also very helpful for isolating individual drum hits in multi-track drum recordings, although that application is maybe a little outside the scope of this course. But to just give you an example here, here are the electric guitars and electric bass soloed, and you're gonna hear some like string uh, noise in between the chords.
So if you want to get rid of that string noise, or if there's any hum or hiss or background noise you want to remove in between these waveforms, that's what removed silence is really helpful for. I do find that with removed silence, it's best to start with a smaller region, dial in the setting you want, and then apply that to everything else. So I've just separated this uh, base into a smaller region. And to access removed silence, you're gonna select a region and press Control X. So this will bring up the remove silence dialog here. And you can see there are four controls. The threshold is going to affect what is determined to be sound and what is determined to be silence. It's kind of like a sensitivity control, but it just senses the peak volume. Anything below the threshold is going to be determined as silence. For each of these controls, you can click directly on the numbers and drag up and down to dial in a setting. And the decimal place you're on also matters. So I can click and drag to dial in the ones, the tenths, the hundredths, the thousandths, etc. So the minimum time to accept silence is the minimum time that the level must drop below the threshold to be determined to be silence. Pre-attack time gives you a little bit of a buffer before the waveform comes in. And there's also a post-release time to add additional time at the end of each edit. I like to dial in a little bit of each of these so that the edits are not trimmed right up against the waveform. I like to give a little bit of space on either side of these edits. I also recommend that you keep the search zero crossing option selected as this will make sure to make all edits at zero crossings, which means you won't hear any pops or clicks in the audio at the trim points. And so then you just click OK, and you can see it's automatically trimmed all of those notes in the bass. And once you dial in a setting, it actually remembers that setting for later. So I can press Control X here, and I can apply that same setting to the rest of the bass part. And so now all of those gaps have been removed. Now, when you have long decaying tails like this, you may have to come back and do some manual editing to get those notes back. And then if I wanted to repeat that same process on the guitars, I could do that as well. And now I've gotten rid of all of those gaps in between these guitar chords and bass notes. Okay, so those are remove silence, bounce in place, and the join functions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.